All right, welcome back to the break. We are still uh, winding, we actually winding up on the topic mm -hmm. of uh, Punguza Mizigo. And we were at the point of, there are several suggestions that uh, maybe counties will not support it, but just for clarity, 24 county assemblies have to uh, clear this so that it can go to the next level, that is um, at parliament. If we have 24 counties, what are the chances that um, either house of parliament will back this and eventually go to the, go the full course. And do you have confidence that you will get the 24 counties? I am very confident. Why am I confident? I'm confident because this bill is for the people of Kenya. Who represent the people of Kenya at the counties is the MCS. And if you read today's paper, you have seen over 13 counties so far are saying this bill is good for our people. They represent the people. But we also know mm -hmm. that we need 24 counties. Mm -hmm. We have made a deliberate attempt okay. to reach out to the members, uh, majority leaders of these counties, and ask them to pass this bill because this bill is for the Kenyan people. They represent the Kenyan people. And when it gets to the Senate and National Assembly, we have also said mm. the Senate have got an opportunity to protect the counties even further by adopting this bill because okay. it will now give them easy work to relate with the their counterparts in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there, there's been misinformation about this bill because of political expediency, which we should put clear today. This bill is not fighting members of parliament. In fact, we would want members of parliament and the Senate to pass it immediately to come from the county assembly. You cannot so say that. that. You cannot say no, that. No, no, I can say that because we, we are have the promoters. Uh, 416 members of parliament exactly. currently. If this goes through, then we reduce that to 147. There are some 269 people who, are, who have a job today. After that, they will not have it. The bill the is jobless. not for the tiny minority. The bill is for the majority of Kenyans. And therefore, there are sacrifices that must be made. We are saying the members of a National Assembly today that still believe that they can represent the people, mm. they will have an opportunity to represent the people, even at an higher level, representing the entire county at the National Assembly, mm -hmm. the 100 Just fewer. of them. Okay. And that few you're talking about is the burden that we are struggling with today. All right. Look at what is happening in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. The allowances, the 700% pension, all those negative stories that the media has been reporting. Mm -hmm. The Mwanainchi has said, we want a leaner parliament. A leaner parliament, when they're legislating, we have got the quality of the legislation coming out of it. Senators have gone to court, they're saying, some of the legislation that came out of the National Assembly are unconstitutional, you know? Mm -hmm. So we are trying to fix an issue that has brought a lot of problems to the common man, so not to the tiny minority. Senator Let's Ledama, speak to the issue, of yes. the, my, my, my question is, this call for a referendum, whether it's through the BBI or it's going to be through the Third Way Alliance, is it selfish, <laughs> this call for a referendum? No, is it truly I, going to be for the people or for you guys? I don't think it is selfish. I think it is, uh, you know, you know, we, we are a country that has been at war with itself. We are a country that we are so divided. So the only thing that can be able to bring us together is if we address the issues, you know, that are dividing us. And the only way we can do that is by following the BBI. They went all across the country. Mm -hmm. They listened to the people. Mm -hmm. We also want to give Not a chance. Not everyone believes in BBI. Okay? We also, that's a, that, and that's the reason why we're in a democratic state. Mm -hmm. We also want to give a chance to the Punguza Musigo. Put the two on the table. See what is realistic. You know, let me tell you, bring yourself down to Kenya. You know, don't be so utopian. And that's the word I'll keep on saying. The Punguza Mzigo is utopian. You know, let us be realistic. We, are, we want to change the country. We want to be able to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to make a living. It is sad when you hear that a natural scientist is out there in the street and does not have a job. Right. So if we can be able so to... So how will that be amending the constitution help you? Because it will be able to maybe devolve more funds into the counties, maybe create more jobs in the, found in the counties, maybe actually devolve the funds which are devolved. Because the problem we are having right now in the Senate is that when you look at health, health mm -hmm. is devolved. But all the money is left in the <coughs> ministry. So not some of, of those things of are the things that... No, no, no. 90% of the money is left in the ministry. That's a fact. Can I? You know? So I think the issue here is this. You ask a very simple question, I'll give you a very simple answer. Will this call for a referendum help us solve our problems? Yes, it will. Because if you remember very well <coughs> that 
the negotiation that took place in Evasia is what has brought us to this problem. So right? is okay. it necessary? I mean, the last time I checked, it's going to cost us about 12, 12 billion, the taxpayer. Is w it even necessary? Was it necessary to get a Huduma number? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you're asking a straight uh, a question that has an answer. Yes. Okay. Can I? It is. All, all right. Uh, we will need to start transitioning into the next topic, which is to do with the supremacy war mm -hmm. that we find between the National Assembly and the Senate. Might this play out even as the, let's assume that 24 county assemblies um, agree with the bill. Will we see that playing a part uh, between the houses of uh, the National Assembly and the Senate in deciding on the fate of this uh, Pungu Zamizigo bill? Um, yes, as I try and answer one other thing about cost, let me answer your question this way. It will play out at three levels. One, uh, to the extent that it, 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 it elevates the Senate mm -hmm. to the upper house and at the very heart of the disputes in court mm -hmm. is about the issue about how to resolve issues about legislation, what is a, a money bill, what should go to counties, about money allocations and all these things. To that extent, I see a situation in which there will be uh, a, a holding of hard positions between the National Assembly mm -hmm. and the Senate. Mm -hmm. I see another uh, position here. There will be party positions mm -hmm. to the extent that there are people who have said uh, we are waiting for BBI and uh, there are people who occupy that position. Okay. BBI is broader. It's perhaps more or less populist and more uh, less more but it's still emotive not and all that. Uh, it is but not clear. The only clear thing but is Mizigo. You, 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 you can be sure that they have not taken one year thinking about how to resolve the nine point issues mm -hmm. only to come and do a, a report okay. that will gather shell. It will go to a referendum, my thinking. Mm -hmm. There is another level that is playing out here is about succession. And you, you, you can see where Senator Murko is coming from is that from the camp of the deputy president they have always opposed a referendum whichever mm -hmm. the case mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. so he's speaking in two respects one that uh, the, the DP part of the wing re opposes a referendum okay uh, that's one point but on the other hand he's mm -hmm. speaking as a senator okay to the extent that this helps them sort out their beef with the National Assembly <laughs> now let, let me come finally to this issue of, of, of cost uh -huh. before we transit to the next topic okay and let me begin with uh, 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 you, you know, amending the constitution by popular initiative, the word popular, uh, it, it presupposes, and that's exactly what I think they're doing, populist, <laughs> leech on, <laughs> clutch on to really? populist things. You can't use Isn't the constitution it? to go against it. The idea about reducing cost is a concern that concerns everybody, including us as members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Let me try and punch holes on one of the things that they have done. They have turned the constitution into that organ or that process where you actually fix that uh, some is going to earn 20,000 and no more. Mm -hmm. What yeah, happens yeah, under Article 230 where we established a commission, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, and which specifically at Part 4 says it shall set the salaries of public servants. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and say we have already set the salaries in the Constitution, let's remove Article 230 of the Constitution. We set. Lastly, we set. you have you, you, you look at your memorandum. Look at your memorandum. It's, you part of, it's part of the call that in itself. Then lastly, my point is this. The, the entire centerpiece of the BBI is based on the fact that we are reducing X amount of trillions of shillings in seven years. The, the basic target of this is the parliament. Mm -hmm. They're reducing, quote, unquote, 38 billion. Mm -hmm. And 38 billion, mark you, this is not only about salaries, it includes the allowances, it includes the staff, it includes travels, it includes everything. That entire <coughs> amount of money that uh, our parliament uh, consumes, and this is only 2% of the national budget. Okay. So we are going to go into, as I conclude, right. the devil in the detail in terms of how we can reduce our public expenditure is that 82% of the money that we, 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 we pass, the 1.3 trillion, 80% of it is the executive. 52% of it is the executive in terms of the, the, the bloated uh, structure that we have. Uh -huh. And 20 something, 30% of it okay. is consolidated fund, which is also controlled uh, the by national. the executive. Okay. I would have liked Puguza Muzigo to tell us, over and above the 2% that you will save taxpayers, even if you say parliamentarians earn zero, let's remove the 2% completely. Tell us how you're going to deal with the 85 oh, right, controlled watch. by the executive. Right. That way, utaku umepuguza mzigo. I'll give right. you the right of reply, but within 30 reply. seconds. Antonio Luwach is a very good friend of mine, and we have argued this in several forums, mm. and I've made him understand all the time. Mm -hmm. Punguza mzigo, the concept is not just about reducing the number of parliamentarians. No. He has made a point that we are putting the salaries in the... No. 
what we are trying to do is we want to enforce the prudent use of, of, of public resources. That principle of public finance management, okay. Article 201, we are saying the national budget for parliament mm -hmm. shall be 0.35% of whatever money. And we are not saying that parliamentarians should not earn more. No. Of budget or revenue? Of 0.5% uh, of the revenue. Mm -hmm. And that money, only 20% of it, Top. shall be used to pay salaries and allowances. And we go further. They are not the only ones that we are affecting. We are saying the highest paid state officer is a practical. Shall not, it is practical. We must cap the salaries if you are going to monitor our wage bill. In the constitution, only be, it shall not be paid 50%. We have seen people struggling with capping borrowing. Mm -hmm. Why don't we cap our salaries? And we are saying if the economy grows under their location and the budget is high, give it to them. 0.35% of 9 trillion would be even so much. Okay. We are not saying that members of the parliament should not earn more. No. Oh, all we right. are saying, mm -hmm. as it is today, okay. we must have a capping in the constitution so that we control on wastage. And by the way, mm -hmm. paying a tiny minority a lot of money is not prudent use of money. Oh, oh, he, has all right, all right, Fred. he has mentioned also a lot of wastage. I'll, I'll have to cut you short. In, in Allow me to cut you short because we're, we're running out of time, Fred. Just one minute. The wastage in the national government, we agree, is so high. And that's why mm -hmm. we have said, instead of leaving 85% of mm -hmm. that money at the national government, take that money at least, the English word here is at least, it means it can be 70 to the counties where the people of Kenya, that is where the Mizigo is, that must 35 be. 35% of revenue or of budget? Budget as approved by the National Assembly. Okay, all right. I, you've been so quiet, but we'll start with you. Let's just take a look at what you're saying on Twitter at uh, Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag being daybreak. If we can uh, sample uh, some of those. Uh, Hilary Nasura, if anything, I'll if anything, I'll support Ekuro Court uh, proposals. We need to reduce the elective positions. For instance, we cannot have five constituencies in Mbakasi when initially had one. Why do we need it? Uh, uh, why do we need 400 MPs? 47 counties, women representatives, nominated positions, we don't need them at all. I support. All right, still sticking um, to Twitter. Sir, you say the affirmative action on women position was meant to uplift Kerubo and Wanjiku, but the elite women ran away with the cause. While, while they are globe dropping and taking uh, caviars, the Kenyan women are still a suffering lot. Change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, Alaki. If MCS vote against this bill, which seeks to give them more resources, then chances of them being voted back is meaning minimal because they will have denied people in the world's development. Of course, already threatening the MCS that they have to support this. Finally, still sticking on Twitter, Steve, you say majority of our leaders will not support the Proguza Mzigo because they feel that they will be making a Kuro so influential. But mm -hmm. truth be said, the changes suggest make a lot of sense to Wanjiko, who is the burden, who is burdened rather by the much consumption in the name of leaders. 